Do you feel catfished by Walt Whitman? I do. I mean, look at this guy. He looks like he's from the wilderness. He lives in a cabin made from logs that he hew himself and he wrestled bears in his spare time. But no, he's from Brooklyn. Yeah, that Brooklyn. He's a journalist and a clerk and of course, a poet. Do you still want to read his book, Leaves of Grass? It's a book of poetry. Well, let me answer two questions for you. I did enjoy reading the book and I do want to read Leaves of Grass again and again and again. Welcome friends to Whiskey and Literature, where we read and discuss the greatest books of all time, the best stories that have ever been put to paper, and occasionally the worst books, and all those in between. Because all the stories, they are ours. And while we're turning those pages, we're sipping on those bottles, those finely distilled spirits. I'm your host, Captain Mike. Thanks for being with me. I watched a YouTube about the 50 greatest books of all time. And I decided to read them all in 2023 and created this YouTube channel to share my experiences and reviews with you. I'm adding whiskey to the mix because I love both books and bottles. My book reviews will have a whiskey of the week. I finally figured out how to add chapters to YouTube videos. So if you're just here for the whiskey, you can skip to the whiskey or skip over the whiskey if you're a minor or a Mormon. Okay, let's talk about Walt Whitman for a minute. He was born in 1819, passed away in 1892. He was from Brooklyn. He lived there most of his childhood and his career. He finished school at age 11 and then went to work. He was both a journalist, a teacher, a clerk, and obviously a poet. He was possibly gay or bisexual, nothing definitive, but there is some evidence to perhaps support that. He paid for the original publishing of Leaves of Grass himself. He spoke out against slavery, and after Abraham Lincoln passed away, he wrote the uh, poem, Oh Captain, My Captain. In his later years, he did relax and enjoy some wine and bubbly occasionally, though for most of his life, he argued for temperance and for prohibition and rarely drank alcohol, which is a nice segue into our quirky question for the author. Would I like to sit down with Walt Whitman and have a nice pour of whiskey and talk about America in the 19th century? And the answer is yes. I think Walt Whitman would have been a nice conversation. I mean, look at that beard. So what was going on in the United States while Walt Whitman was alive? How many states were there even? Many of the states that we know today were still just territories, unexplored. The Civil War happened, slavery, James Wesley Powell. Have you heard of him? He was an explorer. He ran the Colorado River down the Grand Canyon in 1869. The first white person to do that, exploring the Grand Canyon. No one had ever, white person, had seen into the Grand Canyon and navigated it and gone down to the end until James Wesley Powell. That was during Walt Whitman's lifetime. That was the America that he was living in. And by the by, I've been in the Grand Canyon many times. I've rafted it for 10 days. I love it. I've hiked in, hiked out. I love the Grand Canyon. And it was unknown, a wilderness, unexplored back in Walt Whitman's day. That's just kind of the America that he was in. I mention this because I believe that context helps one to understand Walt Whitman's works. 19th century America shaped Walt Whitman, who shaped his poetry. Okay, if you appreciate my work, like this video. Subscribe if you want to see more of my content. In the description below is a link to the reviews that I'm doing this year. Okay, Leaves of Grass. Let's talk about the specs and stats for the book. Originally published in 1855, it had 12 poems and no listed author or publisher. And the publisher was Walt Whitman himself. Whitman decided to answer the challenge thrown down by Ralph Waldo Emerson for a new poet to rise in America singing its praise and vices. The title is even a pun. Leaves, meaning pages, and the word grass was a term given by publishers for works of little or no value. He continued to work on the book throughout his entire life, and there were seven, eight, or nine editions, depending on who you talk to, and the final edition, when he passed away, it had over 400 poems in it. I'm, as much as I enjoyed the book, I'm glad there were only 12 poems that I had to read this year. Ralph Waldo Emerson, he praised the book. Now some people, they deemed it obscene for its depictions of sensuality 
and Walt Whitman was actually fired by the Secretary of Interior when he read the book and deemed it obscene. Okay, to get the idea of getting fired out of our brain, I think it's time for the Whiskey of the Week. Last week I went to a friend's house, birthday party, surprise, 50th, and I took him a bottle of Woodford Reserve Double Oaked. And I had never had Woodford Reserve Double Oaked, and it was fantastic. And I realized that I actually had a bottle of this on my shelf. It's been there for six or eight months, never tried it, never opened it. And I have a lot of whiskeys that I own that I haven't tried at all. And one of them is another Woodford Reserve product, the Weeded Bourbon. I'm sorry, the Weeded Whiskey. And here it is. I'm gonna open it here while I talk about the stats of this whiskey. This mash bill is 52% wheat, 20% malt, 20% corn, and 8% rye. So this is a four grain whiskey. I've never had it. I don't think I've ever had a weeded whiskey at all. So I'm excited to uh, try this today. The bottle is pretty plain. Doesn't say a whole lot. It says it's uh, 90.4 proof. It's at least four years old, but non-age stated. And I paid $31.99 for this bottle, and I've had it eight or nine months and have not opened it yet. When I looked at their website, I'm gonna read this to you. It said the tasty notes are spicy applesauce, toasted coconut, earthy mint, cocoa. But if you've seen any of my videos, you know that I'm not gonna get any of that in my nosing or my tasting. I just will know it's whiskey. Though I will say that when I had the double oaked in Colorado last weekend, I was like, ah, oh, I think I smell some banana. And that is one of the notes in the uh, description for Double Oaked by Woodford Reserve. Maybe a slight bit of banana. Maybe that's uh, a note that I'm able to pick out. Other than that, it smells like whiskey. Wow, that is different. I've definitely never had a weeded whiskey before. I'm gonna enjoy getting into this bottle some more. I will say, I think I did prefer the double oaked. That stuff was pretty phenomenal. Now, onto the poems, or the book actually itself. Because the preface from this book is 15 pages long which is longer than any of the poems in the book except Song of Myself. And that poem is actually, I'm sorry, 44 pages long, which is longer than all the other 11 poems combined. I wasn't really sure what I was getting myself into as I was reading the preface, but I think what it did, it helped me to understand Walt's perspective, 19th century America. And as I got deeper and deeper into the preface, I thought I could kind of understand what Walt Whitman was all about. Again, there are 12 poems in the book, and lo and behold, none of them rhyme. I mean, hasn't he even read Dr. Seuss, which is admittedly as, as deep as I had ever gotten into poetry before reading this book. But I did enjoy the read, and I am gonna read the book again multiple times, because I believe that until I do, I will not understand Walt Whitman, the poems, or 19th century America. I felt like I could see America as Walt Whitman wanted me to. It's history, it's present reality, and it's hopes, dreams, possibilities for the future. I would also strongly encourage you to read these poems out loud. I read parts of A Song of Myself to Mrs. Captain and some of the other poems I read in, its, in their entirety to Mrs. Captain and some of the other ones I just read to myself out loud and it definitely changed and deepened my experience as I was reading these poems versus when I was just reading them in my head. So read the poems and read them out loud. I ordered my copy of the book from Amazon, but all of these poems are a public domain and can be downloaded from the internet for free. 
If you have a Kindle, you can download them in book format for free. This is the only book I've read so far that I didn't listen to any of it all on Audible. In summary, Walt Whitman's 1855 Leaves of Grass is no Dr. Seuss. That's Welch's Grape Soda. This is a nice pour of difficult, dark whiskey that finishes so nice on the palate. I hope you pick up a copy of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass and you enjoy it as much as I did. I might even get into some more. I kind of enjoy poetry. It was nice. Do you have any suggestions for who else I should look into? If so, comment below. Okay, last thing. Next up, we've got Tristram Shandy by Lawrence Stern. A 1727 hoot of a book. Review coming up very soon. All right, my friends. I hope you're reading something good. Turn those pages and stay thirsty.